What's up, you guys? I am here today to give you a brief overview of using Airtable for a project management system for a painting company. I just recently had a podcast with Jacob Ransom, who is the owner of Ransom Digital that helps painting companies specifically. And at the end of the podcast, I just kind of impromptu went in and started walking through the overview of or how you could manage projects for a painting company inside of Airtable. And I was just chatting with Jacob about this. So I'm just going to take that video and put it in here for anyone else that's interested. I tried to explain the differences between relational databases, the idea of having tables in your Airtable for customers, for projects, for employees, for invoices, for AWOs, time tracking, all that stuff. So I hope this is valuable. If this format is useful, please let me know in the comments or like the video and maybe I'll do more of these, but just trying to get more information and knowledge out there about how you could manage your painting business inside of Airtable, because I think it's just such a powerful tool. So check it out and I hope you enjoy the video. All right. So Jacob, what is the perfect tech stack in your opinion for a painting company? Yeah. So I don't care what size you are. Well, okay. I'll say this. If you are wanting to be small, then an all-in-one is for you. If you are wanting to grow a painting company that is above a million dollars, don't waste your time with an all-in-one. We we are against all-in-ones um, because they don't scale. They fall apart. Basically, we explain is this. Uh, while you are the core person in the business, like especially when you're first getting started, you are everything in there. You are a part-time B or C sales guy. You are a part-time B or C project manager. You are a part-time B or C office person. You are a part-time B or C level, right? Uh, uh, appointment setter. To scale a business, you need to bring on an appointment setter who's an A player. You need to bring on a project manager who's an A player, a sales guy who's an A player, an office person who's an A player, right? A players are looking for specialized tools. All-in-ones are the most important 20% that each of those people need to do their job effectively. But once you hand an A player that tool, they're going to quickly realize that 80% is missing. Mm. So we utilize uh, GHL for lead management. We then push all of that into Sheets, which is our CRM. We may end up upgrading into Smartsheet or like an Airtable or something like that. But the core of it is Sheets right now. Um, and then uh, we use Paint Scout for our estimating. And that's it. Love it. I would say do not use smart sheets. I could go okay. on and on about the dangers of that. Yet. Don't look at that. Airtable is, in my opinion, that is the way of the future. In the process of putting out a bunch of content on my YouTube channel about setting up a pro painting project management in Airtable. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm very, I think that that's relational databases. That's the co that's the core difference between uh, smart sheets and Airtable. Smart sheets okay. doesn't do it. Google Sheets really? doesn't do it. But are you familiar with that term? I think I am. I think we so, have stretched sheets as far as they can go in terms of that. Yeah. And Google Sheets doesn't do relational databases either. You have to do lookups okay. constantly. So relational we do lookups all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Relational databases is like you have, I'll show you one. First of all, I, I, oh, actually, before I show you this, I was going to say, I love the, um, I've always said there's the, and I read this book called Only the Paranoid Survive. By Andy Groves, who is the parent, the CEO of um, Intel back in the 90s before the dot-com bubble. The computer industry went from a verticalization where you had companies trying to do everything, right? From like mining the silica, making silicone wafers, like trying to do it all. And then there was a shift and Intel was one of the companies that made this shift where they went, instead of trying to do everything, they're like, wait, Making chips is like highly specialized. We're just going to do that. And then we'll sell it to any computer company that wants a chip, which was brilliant, right? In the software world, I feel like the same thing is happening right now that happened in the dot-com bubble, which is you have all of these specialized tools that are being created. And it drives me crazy when someone's like, oh, a chat tool. Uh, yeah, our app has that too. And I'm like, have you heard of Slack? Like, do you know they're at Slack, they have like 700 developers, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of developers, not even Just their employees like, for yeah. chat. And mm -hmm. it's like, so don't tell me that like text messaging is the same thing as Slack because it's, that's not, you know, so that's, but then apply that to estimating or um, yeah, marketing tools, like analytics tools, reporting tools, it's like. You, the idea that someone can come and make an all-in-one solution that's mm -hmm. going to do all of that. I like everything that you just said. I'm like a hundred percent. I couldn't agree more because you have to, um, 
the my when I'm telling people or recommending like, hey, these are the apps you should use. It's like obviously, if the features are cool and it's enticing, that's what gets you into the conversation. But you should never, ever, ever buy because of features. You right. should you should then next say integrations. Do you integrate with Zapier? Do you integrate with Make? Do you do you have an open API? And then if you do, are the functions and the ability to read and write data in those or trigger automations in those actually sufficient? Because it also frustrates the hell out of me when an app says, we integrate with Zapier and you go look and it's like, you can make a new lead. And it's, yeah, like, it's like one or two things you can do. You yeah. can't, you don't integrate with Zapier. Like that's garbage. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's my, I'm like, yeah. integrations are paramount. Um, now to show you this thing, yeah. because my, my view is get a, depending on, I love that you prefaced with the size of the company as well, because mm -hmm. I think that, or the way I describe it is smaller companies, they need the ease of an all-in-one because they're not going to be able to leverage the complexity of a HubSpot or all these other niche tools, because there's, it takes a team of people to extract the value out of some of these specialty softwares. Right. But if you're going to be a five, 10, $15 million company, even just two you, or three. like you said, you can't even waste your time with an all in one because you're immediately going to be like, well, I want to do this. And it's like, oh, I can't until the five developers of this all in one company decide to prioritize my request which is never going to happen because they've got thousands of requests from all their users. But anyways, I could go yeah. on. Um, I was just going to, this is the one thing I was going to show here is that in Airtable, the biggest mistake that you could make if you haven't looked at this before is thinking, oh, this looks, this is Google Sheets. It looks just like Google Sheets. Look, I got columns and rows. It is not at all because in here you have your database, which is at the root level. Right. So I can have, this is my project table. I have a customer table, a company table, people, which is your employees, AWOs, invoices, hours, everything has its own database. Mm -hmm. And then I can relate those databases together. Yeah. So it's, that's the part that's really powerful. If you look at projects, for example, and I just want to jump in here really quick to say, first of all, if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen any of my other videos before, please like and subscribe. I create content specifically for painting contractors on how to use automation and no code tools to streamline your business and eliminate data entry. So if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with someone else if you found it valuable. And then also, if you want to get in touch and chat, I'm always happy to do that. My contact information is in the description down well, below. I can have all of these columns so this is all the data for just a project. Yep. This is like all of the color form responses that you want the customer to fill out to tell you which colors they're choosing and like gate access code and stuff. Those are all data points as well. So all of this is in the project table. This would be a huge pain in the ass to use if I had to like interact with this data, right? And that's why Airtable has interfaces so I can build an operations interface for my operations manager to come in and see the projects that were uh, like in the timeline when she's scheduling interior or, or sorry, these are cabinets or painting jobs or floor jobs. She can immediately see like where she needs to drop those. And if you update something in the interface, it's updating it on the database level as well. So like I can click on one of these jobs and I have access to all the information about that job that I need to, you know, do my job as the operations manager. But the sales per team is going to need something different than the operations person or the job leader, for example. They just need, you know, like, I need to get direction. So I can, all these little things are like so cool, in my opinion, of like, look, I'm clicking a button and now I'm getting directions to this person's actual address, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, so, anyways, that's the, that's the biggest difference is uh, you have the big databases and then you can layer in the interfaces on top of those. And then the last thing, or this was actually the first thing I mentioned, which is the relational database piece. So with one of these jobs, so you have the projects, I have a crew leader, which is just a name. So in Google Sheets, you would just have Rob in, and it would be a text in the cell, right? Yep. In this, I'm actually linking and you can see this little white line this is Rob, who is a oh, ob he's an item. Yeah, he's an item in the employee table, which yeah. again, why does that matter? It's like, well, now I have this project that's associated with Rob, but I also have another, you know, my uh, customer table. 
So somewhere in here, and again, this might be overwhelming, but keep in mind only your builder is going to use or look at this sheet because this right. is just way too overwhelming for the average person, right? Mm -hmm. And so somewhere, there we go. So right here, I have this project, which is Alice, is associated with the customer, Alice Jenkins. And now I can go see Alice Jenkins. And if she had multiple projects, they would all be listed here because she's associated mm -hmm. from the customer table to that. Yeah. Um, I'm not positive. We oftentimes will sync customers and companies to a data sync with HubSpot, but I think it would do the same thing with Go High Level. So yeah, you could actually that. have your customers and contacts table synced with email and phone and all that stuff. Yeah. Then the other thing I was going to show you, which is, this is why I feel like this is an absolute game changer is because I'm a big fan of Paint Scout as well. Mm -hmm. um, they have this link here, color form link. Mm -hmm. And I made a dummy one for myself. But when I sure. click, I can send this link. If this was you, your project, you're the customer. I can send this link to you. And then it's going to populate the form that you need to fill out with all of the known variables that we already have for you. Okay. So because it's referencing that particular thing, all of your contact information is filled out, which is convenient for the customer. Yes. So here I get to the form and all of the customer information is already filled out because it's mm -hmm. that it's a unique link for that one record. And now the customer is able to edit this directly. So this right here, for example, I could say the color one, cause I already had filled this out previously, but if I say like mountain white Jacob, just to show you what happens immediately. So I fill out the rest of this. I put in, you know, the gate code or whatever else I might need to. And then I can have the customer, you know, sign the form and say, yep, I approve of this. And I submit this. Now, when you go back to the table, mm -hmm. if you go look at that one column, Pulls color up. one was instantaneously updated with the inputs from the customer. Um, and then you can do the other part that Google Sheets can't touch is you can then build automations similar to like what you probably see in Go High Level or Monday or whatever, where I can That's say like when these when the record matches these conditions, which I could say would be like, if these five columns are blank, which would imply that the customer hasn't filled out the form. I want to send an email to them every two days that says, Hey, please don't forget to fill out the form. Hey, don't forget to fill out the form. We haven't got your responses, you know, call us if you need help or whatever it is. And then, I mean, things can go like you go on and on, but you can, because of the automation piece, you have the ability to literally just run JavaScript to do any custom like crazy thing that you want. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Airtable is like the core um, database that you need to have all of your information, like the source of truth. And then it's like ultimate flexibility to put in all the other things that you want. So Terrific. that is why like Smartsheets can't do this. Uh, and it does not allow you to re relate things to each other, which is really right. bad because in the same way, like AWOs, for example, I have, I can have all these AWOs that are after the contract was signed and because I'm linking it to the project. So right here, I'm linking this AWO record to the project. When I go to that project for Chris Kiefer on the AWO column, you can do rollups of certain fields. Right. So I can now see that this is the total number of AWOs that have been accepted in Chris and then add it to the original estimate amount and then get the total amount of the job. Again, because of that relational aspect, if you right. didn't relate it, you'd have to have a lookup field or command to go like try and sum it and you can kind of mimic it, but it's not nearly as powerful and flexible as just like, I want to associate to this record and in doing so, you know, be able to do a bunch of other stuff on top of it. But anyways, that's, um, I, uh, this, I'm actually probably going to use this video and add to my YouTube channel because it's always helpful to show somebody. Do you have questions that might make this video better? No. So like we built, I could definitely see. So basically I'm already seeing like, basically what I'll do is when we're ready, I'll just hand my sheet over to someone who's like expert in, in air table. Cause I know it's like a, a very, I don't know, coding and all that stuff. Um, basically just have them build it. But like one thing I couldn't do in sheets is like, um, because you have the projects in a separate kind of, uh, database is the idea of like, as we're adding that in, can I dynamically update in terms of lifetime, 
value of a customer and then be able to calculate mm. that into our dashboard in terms of lifetime gross profit as an average across different time frames. You can do that in sheets. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, you could definitely do uh, that here. I can I can and I can do an outside calculation and enter in our gross profit percentage, but I couldn't like for instance do a lifetime gross profit of a per customer basis because of now having to actually have separate databases just significantly more complex. Whereas this it sounds like you can just relate projects to a person, which it looked like you, you can, and then like add those projects up and attach that, that to that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll show you right now. And this yeah. is the part that's like oh fantastic God. about it. But can you mm -hmm. see my screen? Mm -hmm. So you could say like total projects, um, value or whatever, and then you right. use a roll up field. And I would say, I want to look at projects. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to sum the total amount column and I want it to be formatted as a currency. And I, you could even add in like additional criteria where you're saying only sum the ones that have a complete date in the past or whatever you want there, but I won't do that mm -hmm. for now. But now all of these people, um, are going to show, and now you have a, you have a, a property that is in the customer table that is summing. I don't know why it's taking so long to save that. So here's the, oh, and I forgot, this is a, a database of every single customer in their system, which is 7,900 and we only have 20 mm -hmm. projects. Right. So let me filter this to only show total project value. And the other thing is like, I'm very new and you can tell I'm like excited about this because I just feel like if I, when I was at Webfoot, we didn't have, I want to do greater than zero. There we go. Mm -hmm. So now these are all of the, um, customers that have total project value. And then again, if you were the other thing I, I know is possible, and that's why I have these tables here is you could import time tracking logs in your invoices and expenses and mm -hmm. essentially have like instantaneous uh, job costing done. Right. You That's theoretically right. could even do that during the course of the job. Like, so mm -hmm. a recruiter could look on day four and see how much time they've logged and be like, oh, we only have 40 hours left. And we're not even, you know what I'm saying? Like something like that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. My whole thing is like, I want to, uh, The you mentioned the thing about abundance. I am like, if I just continue to put out as much content as I can, as I learn things like this, so like I'll take this video and put it on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and I'll just keep pumping out as much stuff as I can. And there is no, I don't know if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. but the idea of like the secret sauce or like, I'm not going to tell someone how I do what I do. It's like mm -hmm. somebody else is going to, that's what YouTube's all about. So like, I just need to continue to put out information and, uh, people will find me and my ideal, I, my, what I've always told people is my ideal client is like four to 7 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. I can work with smaller companies if their goal is to be a four to 7 million company, but the smaller companies, they obviously, they don't have the budget and they usually just want to know how to do it. And so that's why I'm like, all right, here's a whole YouTube channel to teach you everything you need to know. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Boolean Automation with Chris Kiefer and with Rod and their whole entire team has helped us really transform our company with getting the leads out to their sales team and just streamlining the whole entire process. So it's great.